Okay, so let us talk now about the periodic table. So first, um, there's a little story to go with it. There was a man named Dmitry Mandaleev, um, who was a Russian fellow, as am I a little bit. Um, and there's a story that he had a dream, and he dreamt up of the way to arrange the elements. At that point, chemists didn't really know where they went or how to arrange them, but he had this dream, supposedly, and uh, he thought of most of what we have today as the periodic table. And he arranged them according to their weight and also according to their properties. Um, and that is the periodic table that we have today. So I encourage you guys to always have a ready copy be um, that you can refer to at any time. So let's talk a little bit about the periodic table. We've already been using it. Um, there are two major ways to read the periodic table. There's by groups and there are by periods. The periods are the things that go across, the rows that go across, and groups are the rows that go down. They're also sometimes called families. And the reason that groups are called families um, is because an element, elements in one of the groups, in one of the families, all have the same kind of bonding character. And why do you think that would be? That is because the elements in one group have pretty much the exact same electron configuration. Okay, so all of these guys have two electrons the, um, in the S, in the S um, block, with of course different varying principal energy levels. And all of these guys, for example, are all missing one electron from the complete octet. Okay, they all have um, the two electrons from the S the D and also the 5 from the P. And this group, for example, is a very special family or group. They're called the noble gases and these guys are living the dream. They have the eight electrons in their valence shells, so they have everything they want and that is why they're very non-reactive. You cannot get these guys to react because they don't want to. Um, but anyway, so the groups, you want to remember that they have the same properties because same amount of valence electrons. The periods um, it are in the same principal energy level. So as we go across, it's the same principal energy level, except of course for the D block, which is almost minus, which is always minus one, remember that. But so the periods um, are kind of the energy level. And as you go, you put in more and more and more electrons. One electron on the P block, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Um, but they also have different properties. Um, so they're not like the groups. Let's talk about metals versus non-metals versus metalloids. Right here we have this little step. Um, and uh, around this step we have some, some elements that are neither metals nor non-metals. And um, on one of the sides, on each side of this, we have non-metals and metals, or metals and non-metals. Which way is it? Do you know? Over here we have metals. And over here, we have non-metals. And here, we have something, some elements that are in between, that are called metalloids. So these guys, the metals, um, what kind of properties do they have? Let's talk about some of the trends. Acidic properties are the greatest at the right of the periodic table. So do the metals or the non-metals have the most acidic properties? the non-metals, okay? Acidic properties are greatest to the right, so the non-metal guys have the greatest acidic properties. 